And this is something I would like you to grasp very deeply. God is infinitely more powerful than our enemy. Hi, this is John Stemkowski, and it's so good to be back with you today for the next in our series of Encouraging Words. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the battles that we go through. And you know, in these weeks and months, as they've worn on with the pandemic and all the changes around us, there are a number of battles. Some of them take place in our mind. Some take place in our emotions. But there are battles of all sorts. And there are players in that battle. We're there. God is there. Satan is there. And I want to unpack for you a little bit today just a peek into the battles that we face, how God helps us, what Satan's agenda is against us, and how you and I can be overcomers. Let's take a look into God's Word, John chapter 10 and Isaiah 54, for a little light on this very important subject. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. My interest in this episode today is to help you through, to help you navigate some of the challenges and problems with which we're dealing and to open up a little bit the understanding that we do not remain unaffected by spiritual forces in this equation. In that first scripture in John chapter 10, it's Jesus speaking, and he's talking about our enemy, our enemy, and he calls him the thief. Now, the thief of which he's speaking is Satan himself, and he says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come, said Jesus, that you might have life, and that life more abundantly. If you really boil this down and said it in a simple way, it would be like this. God is a good God, and the devil is a bad devil. God has an agenda toward you, and all of it's good. And the devil has an agenda toward you, and all of it's bad. And that will never change. God will never be against you and the devil will never be for you. But we're sort of here in the middle as we try to navigate things, and I won't give you a full exhaustive treatise on this particular subject. That's impossible. It's such a big subject. But I do want to hit some key points for you today that will give you hope and encouragement, because as a believer, if in fact you are a committed believer in Jesus Christ, you have some promises here and I want you to be able to take advantage of them and appropriate them in your life. When I said, in essence, that God is a good God and the devil is a bad devil, it, it really means this. You have two powerful entities there, two powerful forces, but they are by no means equal. And this is something I would like you to grasp very deeply. God is infinitely more powerful than our enemy. God is eternally existent. He had no beginning and he has no end. We can't even get our mind around that. God is also the creator of all things seen and unseen. Satan, by contrast, is a created being. He's a created being. He came forth because God created him. Now, he did not create him in his present form. He created him, really, if you read the scriptures, as the most beautiful of all angels, you might say the crown of his angelic creation. And he endowed him with marvelous gifts. But Satan desired, he was not happy with his particular position, he desired more. He spoke in the earlier uh, chapters of Isaiah about wanting to set himself up equal to the Most High God. And there was a conflict in heaven, and Satan was ejected. Satan was thrown out. He was forced out of heaven. Now, some say that Satan fell. Well, 
Others say he was pushed. And he really was. He was forced out because he tried to mount a uh, resistance or an insurrection against God Almighty. And God forced him out of heaven. In the book of Revelation, there's reference to the fact that in addition to Satan himself, this beautiful angelic being who had rebelled against God, that also a third of the angels were ejected with him. So it's very important to note that God is all-powerful. That's why we call him Almighty God. And he's not a created being. He's eternally existent. No beginning and no end. Satan was his creation who rebelled against him and fell. And since that time, he has been attacking mankind in various ways, using various tools to steal, to kill, and to destroy. In that scripture in John 10, it lays out Satan's agenda toward you. His agenda, please understand this, is to steal, to steal from you, to steal your joy, to kill, to kill your spirit, and to destroy, to destroy your life, and to cause all manner of problems for you while you trod this earth. But it also has an eternal component, because though Satan can create lots of havoc for us while we're here, and there is spiritual warfare, and we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, rulers of darkness and high places, while that is true, the death blow that Satan could wield to us is that we would fail to recognize Jesus as the Christ, to recognize God for who he is, to accept his forgiveness. And this promise at the end of John 10, where Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The entrance into that is to surrender our hearts and say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Savior. I want to follow you. I believe that you are the Christ, and I want to give my life to you. If we do that, we receive abundant life. But it does not mean that Satan will stop his uh, attempts and his attacks on us. For example, in Matthew chapter 4, it says that Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit where Satan came to him and tempted him. There were several temptations, none of which uh, were successful. Jesus thwarted them all. But the Bible says in that passage that Satan looked for a more opportune time. And I will tell you this, Satan is forever and always looking for a more opportune time, some way that he can get our eyes off of God, onto circumstances, or onto ourselves. And he uses many tools, discouragement, condemnation. Jesus said, I've not come into this world to condemn the world, that, but that the world through me might be saved. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He will accuse you. So his agenda is totally bad toward you, to steal, to kill, to destroy. God's, on the other hand, is totally good, that you and I might have life and life more abundantly. As I mentioned, this is a rather broad subject, and there's so many places in the scriptures where we could go. But today, I just wanted to bring to your awareness that a lot of the things that you and I face have a spiritual component to them. When we look at that scripture in Isaiah 54, I want to key in on one little part of it. It says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Now, I need to give you a little context in Isaiah 54. First of all, Isaiah is a prophet, and he was speaking prophetically about the children of Israel, God's chosen people. And there was a season, in fact, there were many seasons through their history, where those folks had walked away from God. They turned their back on God. They uh, ceased to, to follow his commandments and to be obedient. And of course, you and I are prone to that. There are many times when we've walked with God and many times when we've failed and fallen. In fact, in the New Testament, we're told that 
No one is righteous. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we have that capacity as human beings. But in this context, the children of Israel had walked away from God, and they were uh, experiencing quite a lot of judgment. But there was a restoration process as they came back, repented of their sins, and said, Lord, please forgive me. One beautiful thing about God is that the moment you do that, he is like the the father of the prodigal son who runs toward you with his arms wide open and full of forgiveness to restore. Well, that was the setting of Isaiah 54. And so as that restoration takes place, the ending of it said, no weapon formed against you will prosper, and even the accusing tongues you would condemn. I want to unpack that just a little bit. There are weapons, as I mentioned, of discouragement, of uh, condemnation, of many things that Satan uses, of isolation, to discourage you, to get you down in your spirit. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. No weapon of Satan's will prosper ultimately. The antidote to Satan's agenda, which is for your demise, is to turn to God and say, protect me, forgive me, surround me with your love, so that no weapon from the enemy formed against me would prosper. And my dear friend, I tell you the truth, you do have a refuge in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's sort of an if-then promise if we decide to follow him, if we decide to commit our lives to him. The Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. There will be challenges, there will be difficulties, but no weapon formed against you will ultimately prosper. You will be delivered, and God will protect you. In each one of these videos, we select a song for you. And today is a song that I wrote several years ago on this very subject. It's called No Weapon. And it uses that very text, no weapon formed against you will prosper. You're hidden in the cleft of the rock. You're held in his hands. All kinds of provision and protection that God has given for you. The reason I want to bring this to your attention today is I don't want you to be battered around by all the things that are happening in this world, to be discouraged, to be down. I want you to be uplifted and encouraged with the knowledge that because of God's great love for you, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Listen to the celebrants as we sing the truth of that song and let it wash over your spirit. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Take a listen. Father, he hears your prayer and in less than a moment he's 
enjoyed that song, and I hope that the strong message of it has resonated in your spirit. Again, dear friend, the reason I bring this to your attention today is I don't want you to be ignorant of the wiles of the enemy of your soul. Neither do I want you to be ignorant of God's love for you, his provision, his protection, his refuge that he offers you, the abundant life of which he speaks. If I could make it really simple, I would simply say it this way. God is always voting for you. Satan is always voting against you with an accusatory tone. And you, you and I, we get to cast the deciding vote. With whom do you want to agree? You want to agree with God's grace and his forgiveness or Satan's accusations? I think that's an easy answer, isn't it? Let's align our hearts with the God who loves us, with Jesus, who offers us his grace, his mercy, and his forgiveness. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you that through the cross of Jesus Christ, through the blood of Christ, you have canceled and broken the teeth of our enemy. That though Satan's agenda is to come and steal, kill, and destroy. You've come that we might have life. Your life is stronger than his opposition. And thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word that says no weapon formed against us can prosper. Father, as we navigate the challenges that are in our lives today, the pressures that come our way, may we be quick to look to you and find you as our strength, our deliverer, and our refuge. And now, dear friend, I pray for you. I pray that you'll sense the presence of the Holy Spirit so near to you right now. And that when your spirit is troubled or there are pressures or challenges or difficulties in your life, that you'll quickly turn to the one who promises you abundant life, grace, mercy, peace, strength, and provision. Father, speak to our friend today. Minister to them. Bless them. Hold them close to your heart and protect them from the wiles of the enemy. We give you thanks and praise. Protect us, keep us strong in you, and let us always remember that no weapon formed against us can prosper. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name with gratitude. Amen and amen. Thanks so much for being with us today. We've enjoyed, as always, being with you. And let us hear from you. Make a comment below or send us an email. I want to do a shout out today to a dear friend of our ministry, George Johnson, who lives in India. George, thanks for commenting virtually every week. We're so encouraged by that. And friends, should you need prayer for anything, please let us know that as well, would you? We will pray for you. God bless you today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Encouraging Word.